If you've committed yourself with those responsibilities, you don't need EPIL, you don't need them. I'm being responsible, that's why I take the pill. She'll have paid the ultimate price for using contraception. Family planning is nearly universal, with 95% of all women and 97% of men aged between 15 to 49 being at least one modern method of family planning. With the intention to control rapid population growth over the years, the government has invested a lot to ensure awareness of contraception among people. Emergency contraception, also referred to as the EPIL, to prevent pregnancy after unprotected sexual intercourse. EPIL has become a common phenomenon among the youths today. They may think it's an easy way out to prevent unplanned pregnancies after unprotected sex, but the EPIL is more dangerous than you think. Now, the, 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 the emergency pill, or postna 2 as the most young people know it, is the most popular among um, college-going students, people are in, the, in the early 20s, uh, they're the ones using it very, very commonly. And how does the emergency pill work? How the emergency pill works? is by giving a large amount of hormone, estrogen and progesterone, at a go. The amount that we would normally ordinarily use for six days is given at a go to prevent the process of, uh, of uh, fertilization from going on to implantation. And some of the things, uh, or some of the side effects, or some of the uh, disadvantages, so to speak, uh, of this emergency pill will uh, emanate from that, of how the method by which it works. So what it normally does is, ordinarily, when pregnancy is normally occurring, the, the fertilization, or the zygote, would move in a systematic way to the uterus to be implanted there. But then what the emergency pill does is to cause contractions. Most of the youths are only interested in having fun now and never thinking of the future. Youth, you have to party, you have to do everything you can because when you grow up and get married, it's just children, your husband, taking care of everything, but for now, I really have to enjoy my youth. You know, it's even in the Bible. Enjoy your youth. So, I enjoy it while it lasts. Most of the parents are never keen to realize what their children are involved in, hence causing promiscuity in their behavior. And because also being taken for boarding uh, at an early age, we didn't cultivate that open communication system with the child. So even the child is, uh, is wondering, do I ask about, do I do this? Ah, let me just read in the net. The church and other religious leaders condemn the use of artificial contraceptive methods so as to prevent pregnancies. They hold the view that sexual intercourse is mainly meant for procreation for it is a gift from God. In terms of contraception, it's an interesting thing. Um, some people would say that um, the advent of the birth control pill, artificial uh, contraception, um, brought about a, a whole new um, sexual revolution and a change. A sense of freedom from uh, pregnancy um, was now a license to engage in uh, genital activity that was not seen before. What the Catholic Church um, uh, and many other churches um, uh, uh, speak clearly about is artificial contraception. And, and so the Church, uh, in her documents, um, has for the last 50 years since Vatican II spoken about responsible parenthood. So the Church sees human sexuality and genital relations as belonging exclusively in marriage. And so that within marriage, um, uh, the, the sense that it's a gift from God to create and be co-creators of human life and to have human life being born. Outside of marriage, then sadly it becomes more of recreational use and an artificial um, uh, intensity of a relationship that's often not fair. You know, this life you really have to enjoy. Like me, I know when I grow up I'm going to get married and be stuck to this one man. So I have to use my opportunity right now. Now that I have to use those pills, go as far as I can and 
enjoy my sex with the men as many as I can. So that when it comes to time for settling, I just settle and I know I did all that when I was still a youth. So that's it. Family is a very essential aspect in life, for one has a right to belong. Social morality and leadership are some of the tools that could enhance morality within the society. For the Benson shares with us. The most important aspect of leadership to be personal witness. And therefore, the personal witness speaks loudly to people about the quality of what one's moral words are about. Because one can speak a lot about an issue, but one has to live it. And so uh, Thomas Aquinas uh, and Aristotle had an, uh, a specific adage. They said, Adjure sequitur esse. What you do flows out of who you are. And so if you want um, moral leadership, then, uh, and this goes for priests, for bishops, uh, for presidents, for secular leaders, church leaders, it's about living a moral life and uh, portraying it in your actions, not just in your words. Parenting is an essential aspect in the life of a young growing adult. The absence of this could be regarded as one of the factors that lead to immorality among the youths. Mrs. Alice Nzangi, a psychologist, explains more. Let parents also know that they have a part to play here. Let's, let's help our girls know how to handle this issue of sexuality, how to handle the good feelings when they get there, and how to take care of themselves. At least a good number will internalize that and be able to go through the stage comfortably. does say that sex before marriage um, is an abuse of a, of a great uh, uh, gift that comes from God. That, um, Children have a right to be generated, generated within a family. And so to generate uh, a child either through artificial contraception in a laboratory, to generate children through a surrogate parent, to generate um, uh, a child um, uh, outside of marriage deprives that child of that family unit. So that's part of the uh, uh, lack of dignity of sex. Well, I think that's all. But what are the effects of the EP on the users? Problems we anticipate, in fact the very worst of them, is that people are able to get ectopic pregnancy, which is a medical uh, emergency requiring emergency treatment. They need to move on with life drained. Somebody is emotionally crushed. These young people will get is that because the periods are dependent on the hormonal environment, once you change that, they get um, menstrual irregularities. The commonest that they get is they, they have very profuse bleeding. Sometimes they have very profuse bleeding, continuous, longer than uh, normally supposed to occur. One of the other problems sometimes they come presenting with is that they have missed their periods for some time. And again, you remember they are, they are trying to prevent pregnancy, so that becomes uh, psychologically affecting them, wondering whether they actually did become pregnant or is it that the hormones is the one which is purely making them have those uh, you know, periods. And in the long term, uh, since we are talking about hormonal environment, there's a chance of their fertility being affected in the future. Why? Because you have disordered eh? the very hormones which are at the core, at the center of the process of fertility. Now that person will live with guilt, that person may live with hatred because may now uh, project it to the parents. I wish mom had time to talk to me on these things. Why did she let me do, do, do things like this? I wish I never listened to this one. Hatred, anger, and those are not comfortable zones. I mean, that's not comfortable life. No mental well-being, no physical well-being. And no matter how much during the day the child looks or the girl looks okay, when she's alone, she's not okay. Uh, when one comes with a, an ectopic pregnancy, one of the uh, things we consider is whether it is ruptured or it has not been ruptured. Because these are pregnancies which is uh, going on at the level of the, the tube. So depending on how far it has gone, either they have been ruptured or it has, been, uh, has not been ruptured. And uh, the, the options that we have is that we have to operate. We have to do an emergency operation, which can either be open, uh, the open one we say laparotomy, or if it's um, uh, through uh, minimum access, it can be laparoscopic. But then the idea is that we have to get the region of the tube and actually tie the tube off and actually uh, remove it.
what we call salpingectomy as, as a method of treatment. Meaning that at the end of the treatment, uh, this young lady now will be having what? only one tube to, uh, to battle with the issues of fertility. That is how come their fertility is uh, affected. And without forgetting that this is a medical emergency. What we mean by that is that sometimes if it, the, the, the rupture and she has bled quite a bit and there's no medical care available to her very early on, she can, she's at uh, a, a chance of losing her life. Take um, a total of 10 girls, young people that age, age group, coming to uh, see the gynecologist. Six out of 10 uh, to be something related to having used the emergency pill. Because what tends to happen is that sometimes the symptoms they get come uh, a couple of weeks or even sometimes a month or two after they have taken the emergency pill. Yeah, that, so when they come up, uh, uh, around there, most of the complaints they have, some of them will have abdominal pain, some will have irregular bleeding then uh, we, we have to work out to see what kind of uh, uh, diagnosis they have. Is that they're having an ectopic? Is it that they're just having uh, uh, menstrual irregularities because of the hormones? Is there a difference between the youth whose parents are involved in their lives and those whose parents are not? Speak out. I, I, I'm, I'm usually myself because I just ask for permission and they allow me. So anytime I want to do something, I just ask for permission. Because it's very difficult And one time or another, With all the sensitization on HIV AIDS and trying to accept the trauma that comes along with it, society has neglected what this would cause to the young adults. A research has found out that um, young girls are not so much worried about STIs and HIV. And the reason is this campaign of living positive when one is positive, HIV positive, it's like it has, it has had its own meaning to them that I can still have HIV and live positive. HIV is a disease like malaria. HIV is a disease like high blood pressure and people are living, even my own parents, they have diabetes, high blood pressure, but pregnancy, it will distort our physical figure, it will bring in other complexities, so they would rather think or preventing pregnancy than HIV. I rather contract the HIV because HIV, I'll just go to the hospital, they will take my CD4 count. If it's very low, I'll go on ARVs. I've seen people who have lived with HIV for 20 years, they still give birth to children, they live a normal life. But for the pregnancy, come on, the whole, my whole hometown will be talking about how someone's daughter is pregnant. I mean, I have to keep my image. The nine months can really be a living hell, so I'd rather get the HIV. Again, a sign of immaturity. A person who would think that is too young to be a mother, is too young to be a wife. It's a very immature stage of development because what they're really doing is thinking only of today, and an immature person speak, thinks only of today. The, the, the reason why the girls maybe um, prefer uh, getting HIV AIDS is because according to them, they, we have a plan. You can live positively with HIV, but then they have not had, had anybody talking to them about living positively with pregnancy. It's because society out there uh, actually um, uh, looks very badly at a girl who has become pregnant. Because one, probably she has to drop out of school, her friends will desert her, her parents will desert her, everybody who is involved with her because her church, uh, which is supposed to assist her, will also desert her. But then with HIV, you know, because of the, the programs that as a country we are having, we, we, we can put them on ARVs, then we have been able to demonstrate them that uh, people can live for 20 years positively and doing things normally like society. They have, unfortunately, they have, they have thought that HIV is less of an evil than uh, pregnancy.
what can be done to promote positive living among the young adults. In this country still sex education is a, an issue. Um, and we need to talk about these things to help and provide um, perhaps Catholic and Christian youth groups that address these and provide some kind of, of um, community for young people where they can have fun, where they can enjoy life, but not be a force to express themselves in such a, a self-destructive way. Uh, with accounts, so what you do now with can affect your future. So. Young people, the big message we are sending to them, just like our society, as a gynecologist in that area, we are asking them to think very carefully about issues of contraception. We want them to think about their lives. We wish them to have a very good life. We want them also to make uh, um, decisions about their lives. We want them actually to take control. The, the language they normally talk about, we want them to take control of their lives. And the best way of doing that is getting a lot of information. Uh, before you uh, use any of their contraceptions, it's better to speak to a medical worker. Is there something they can do to try and uh, not to get the medicine over the counter? So some of the things we are trying to advocate.